Every role has its strengths in League of Legends, and as different people, we gravitate toward different strengths. Maybe you want to go for Clutch Insects as a jungler that mains Lee Sin, or Sick Out plays as Vayne, but we know that you guys really just want to emulate Faker or the solo queue star Dopa. Before you get to that point though, you have to learn a lot about the mid lane. That's why we're sharing our top 10 tips for mid laners. The world can always use more Faker after all. Also, if you're looking for a place to learn from your fellow mid lane enthusiasts or simply complain about your junglers, why not join the Pro Guides League of Legends Discord? We'll be sharing all our YouTube uploads so you'll never miss a beat while providing a space for League players of all types. Check out the link in the description below. Before we get started, our question of the day is, who is your favorite mid laner? Yasuo fans will be reported. Let us know all your answers in the comments and without further delay, let's get into it. When you think about roaming as a mid laner, you've typically been taught to push mid and run to top or bottom lane to help your team. The general idea here is correct, you need to push a lane and use your lane priority. But there are a lot of steps that you should actively think about before committing to a roam. We're going to list out all the possible steps to a perfect roam, and it will be up to you just how many of these steps you want to take to ensure your roaming success. Alas, here it is in four steps. Step 1. Push. You push out mid. This will either be through champion difference if you have a lot of wave clear or skill difference if you have lane pressure in the 1v1. Step 2. Establish vision control. Place a control ward in one of the mid lane brushes, preferably the side you plan on roaming to. You might also want to use your trinket ward on the same side. Step 3. Push. From here, you hover around the side with established vision and look to push the following minion wave. Again, this will either be through champion difference or skill difference. Step 4. Execute the roam. After pushing out the wave, look at the next minion wave. You might be wondering why you have to look at the next minion wave, but it's pretty simple. If you fully commit to a roam and the minion wave has already left your base, the enemy mid laner will have time to shove the wave and take a plate or two. If the minion wave hasn't left the base yet, you might have just enough time to return to lane and protect your tower. That was a lot, so here's a couple of tips to get the main points across. Steps can often be skipped depending on the game state. Some key factors that can change your play include the enemy team having a weak farming jungler or the enemy mid laner not having the tools to shove your lane back, such as Cassidin or Kale. Don't be afraid to stop your roam. Sometimes stepping off the map and going into fog of war will be enough to relieve pressure for your top or bot lane. Instead, you can look to grab the honey fruit plant or help your jungler secure a crab or enemy camp. Keep in mind that the point of these steps is to minimize how much you lose and to maximize safety since roaming is often about considering a 50% success rate on any given play. We're going to list a couple of decent blind picks, but won't get quite into the minutia of what makes them good individually. If you do want to get into the minutia of these champions, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're always talking about the best picks and how to keep up with the current meta. These blind picks do have effective counter picks, but they're generally solid all around picks if you need to guarantee a safer laning phase. There are a lot of different ways that you can counter pick, and we will provide a list of counter picks for the aforementioned blind pick champions. Be sure to keep in mind that it often comes down to experimentation and experience to understand if something truly has a slight edge over another pick. For Cassiopeia, Glacial Vagar often serves as a great counter pick. LeBlanc has annoying lane pressure, but Cassidin actually comes in clutch once the game goes later. Orianna is great at neutralizing matchups, but Diana is a great answer with her all-in capability. Ryze is as annoying of a machine gun as ever, but consider Xerath with his significant range advantage. Syndra feels like the queen of lane pressure, but Echo has the wave clear and all-in to be a great pick. Zoe's projectiles are the worst, why not say no with Yasuo's Windwall? It's pretty obvious that our spicy take among the counter picks is Cassidy. Cassidy loses practically every lane, but he scales incredibly and can put a lot of pressure on sidelines once he reaches level 16. Consider picking him if you notice that most of the enemy's team damage is AP based, given that Cassidy's passive ignores 15% of magic damage. Hovering sounds a bit weird here, but basically, you want to position yourself in lane on the opposite side of the jungler's location. For example, if you know the jungler is currently in their red quadrant, you want to hover toward your own red quadrant. This makes it slightly more difficult for the enemy jungler to approach ganking you. Still though, you might want to consider hovering toward the enemy jungler if you have a strong early game jungler looking to keep the pressure up early on. You should follow this strategy for the first 5 minutes of the game since jungle tracking is pretty clear early on, but after that, wards will come into play and more clearly determine where the jungler is. 
Now, controlling your lane and helping your jungler is relatively easy if you're playing a champion with early lane priority, but here's the point. If you have the ability to control the lane, you want to move first if the enemy jungler is trying to contest a scuttle crab or jungle camp. If you're able to move first in these situations, you'll get your damage off first and probably make the difference when it comes to free kills or burning enemy summoner spells. That's all good and fine, but what do you do if you don't have priority? In this case, you have two options. Let your jungler know to retreat and hope he listens, or sacrifice your own minion experience in gold to try and swing back the situation in your favor. Neither option is particularly appealing, but that's the reality of things if you don't have lane priority early on. Earlier in the video, we talked about roaming and how a few general ward placements are often important. We're gonna double down on that now with some other prime ward locations, depending on your lane position and available time. We'll be showing everything from blue side's perspective, but you can flip the positions to work for purple side as well. Here are a few warding locations to keep in mind. Feel free to mix it up. Standard bot side vision. Standard top side vision. Defensive vision top side. Defensive vision bot side. Keep in mind that these are sample ward spots. You can look to place them deeper if you have the time and resources to do so. Choose Teleport if the matchup is difficult or if none of the other summoners are particularly helpful. Ignite is a great choice if you have kill pressure in your lane and will be in range to use it. Heal is typically chosen bot, but feel free to take it if you need to win the 2v2 mid. If you're looking for a defensive summoner for constant 1v1 fights, look no further than Barrier. If the enemy team has a lot of crucial crowd control, Cleanse is a great choice to narrow their routes of play. Assassins can often go hand in hand with the roaming category since they primarily function to pressure laning phase and roam if their opponent respects the pressure. If not though, assassins can look to swing the game by all inning the opposing mid laner. Examples of these champions include Zed and Talon. Roamers are champions that look to clear waves quickly and roam from lane to either help control scuttle crabs, jungle camps, objectives, or to other lanes. Examples of these champions include Aurelian Soul and Kiana. Caster's mages often look to poke enemies and slowly build up pressure with incremental damage and lane priority. From there, they traditionally look to push their lead through more poke or objective control. Examples of these champions include Syndra, Cassiopeia, and Orianna. AD carry style mids are basically marksman champions being played mid instead of bot. They look to pressure traditional mid laners early on and push their lead once they reach their power spike at one, two, or even three items. Examples of these champions include Lucian, Corky, and even Azir. Scaling mids often try to minimize just how much they lose early game, while gathering as many resources as they can. They often try to transition into the late game at level 16 with their three item power spike. These champions include Kassadin, Kale, and everyone's favorite Hemomancer, Vladimir. Side laning as a mid laner often happens when bot lane moves mid to better control objectives between 14 and 19 minutes. Some champions better fit the side laning role than others, but it's a natural transition regardless. As a control mage, you should look to push a side lane toward equilibrium in order to rotate and help your team. Or in the case that your jungler is in the area, you can push the minion wave past the halfway point and rotate to establish even more control. Halfway point. Past halfway point. As a roamer, you should look to push the wave past the halfway point and either roam mid or roam to the player that receives your wave. As an assassin, you typically want to push your wave and escort it until you know where the enemy jungler is. Once you know where they are, you can look to all in the person matching your minion wave, creating an opportunity for your team. As an AD carry style mid laner, you generally want to push the wave and pressure the tower. This assumes that you have proper vision. Be sure to establish that beforehand with your team. Traditionally, the rule of thumb is to push out waves and establish vision, but where do you go from there? If your team succeeds more grouped around objectives, you should look to push out and regroup with your team to force a play. On the other hand, if you notice your champion does really well against the champion you're side laning against, feel free to push the pedal to the metal and pressure the side lane with split pushing. If the enemy mid laner is roaming, it can be confusing on when you should and shouldn't be following. That's why we're here for you. When you're choosing between following them or not, consider these variables. Is your teammate dead or going to die already? Do you have vision of the champion that's roaming? Will you die if the roamer decides to try and ambush you from fog of war? Do you get more value out of clearing waves and hitting tower instead? All of these are very important when considering whether you should follow a roam or not. In solo queue, pushing mid and sacrificing the lane being roamed on can often be profitable. This is a more selfish play, but there's no guarantee that following the roam will benefit you in any way. 
Now, if you stay mid, you have guaranteed minion gold and experience. In solo queue, minimizing any level of variance can be crucial to consistent performance. That concludes our video on all the tips you'll need to start carrying from mid lane. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. If you guys want more content to help you improve, check out ProGuides.com, where we've teamed up with pro players to create guides designed to take your game to the next level. Also, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel, where we're constantly uploading new content just like this. Good luck out there on the Rift, everyone, and we'll see you all next time.